I'll step over and shake hands and say, hey, how's it going? Let's uh, play each other's pawns. Right. And is it, do you have any sense of solution? I mean, you started by talking about hope and how to get out of this. Does anyone have an idea? Oh, well, the way it breaks down any, any boundary between our different place and the other people. That's what the sun would be saying, you know, I really love that. I think Dickie Shades of Grey is wonderful. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay, in the back. Me? Yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting when Peter brought up uh, dystopia as an example of uh, what's often uh, accepted in literary circles, uh, science fiction that's usually uh, taken over there, because we have in, in science fiction and uh, utopian fiction and a long tradition of future. Uh, post-apocalyptic fiction that isn't necessarily bleak or optimistic, just kind of in the middle. And I wonder how much the popularity of dystopian fiction in literary circles is because it appeals to their idea of what is realistic. Okay, but on what the last few words? Uh, I'm wondering how much the appeal of dystopia for literary uh, people is because it appeals more to their idea of what is realistic. What is realistic? So dystopia is popular because dystopia is real. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah. oh, honestly, I'm going to get classes here for a I think it goes to people who have a lot of stuff. Because they don't worry so much. It's fun for them to read about having your stuff taken away when you know you've got stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if you actually think about people who need stuff, they, they will read magic realism because great things happen. Magic will come in yeah. and create a wonderful thing. You have to be beautiful and you feel better about your day. And perhaps people have too much stuff and they feel better by reading about books in which they're <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 